Hi, welcome back to another SolidWorks tutorial video. Now this one is going to be based around surface modeling and using the boundary surface tool within the surface modeling uh, process. So let's have a look. Now, when we're using the boundary surface tool, what we need to do is create some sort of frame for the boundary surface to lay over, like a skin on a plane wing. Um, so what we need to do is create some profile. Now, the way I like to start off is always working in quarters um, of a component. So if I click the top plane there, and I'm gonna draw, start with a sketch drawn onto the top plane with an outer profile of the shape that I want. So I'm going to sketch on there and this is going to be a spline that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to use a spline because it allows me to create complex curvatures. So if I click along there, like so. Now I've just created a, a shape there with that spline tool. Uh, from that, I am also going to create a center line which runs straight down vertical along that uh, spline. What that means is I can set a relationship between the end of the spline and the end of the center line, make them horizontal to each other, and they will stay the same length. So if I change the length of the center line, say 100, the spline length will change with it but the shape will stay the same so it's almost a little way of being able to define it without uh, being able to put dimensions all the way along here the only real way of being able to fully define a spline is using the auto dimension tool okay so once we've got that profile i'm going to create another outer profile but i need to do that in a separate sketch so i'm just going to close that sketch and i'm going to create a separate sketch at 90 degrees to that original one. So on that right plane. So if I create a separate sketch on there, and I'm gonna create a profile that goes along here again with a spline. So starting from the same point. So at this end at the origin, they're interacting with each other or intersecting with each other. And a profile like so. Now what I want is at the end of this profile, I want them to line up. So I can try to find the end of our center line. There we go, pick up that point and pick up the point at the end of our spline and just make a vertical relationship between them two points. Okay. And I'm just gonna exit that sketch. Now what I've got there, if I look down it, is one quarter of a design. I've got a top, I've got, sorry, I've got um, an outer limit to my model with the sketch on the right plane, which is sketch two. And I've got a louder limit to the side of my model with sketch one there on the top plane. What I want to do is create some sort of link between the two going across. And to do that, I need to sketch some design, some shapes going across there. So I'm going to put in some planes which will allow me to sketch them. So from the front plane there, I am going to put some, I'm going to create some planes off that front plane at set distance going back. So if I go to features, I'm going to go to reference geometry and plane. And that will put in a single plane. However, I want to move multiple planes. So let's put in a couple there. So I'll put three planes in and let's change that distance. So I've got three planes in going across the distance of my model and take that. Okay, so what I'm gonna use these for is a connection between the two sketch one and sketch two. So on plane one, I am gonna sketch and I'm gonna sketch a spline. Now I'm just gonna start off by not connecting it to either of sketch one or sketch two. The reason for that is what I want to do is actually pierce either end of this sketch to sketch one and sketch two. Like so. And if they're intersecting, there's a risk that I end up in a relationship in that I don't want. So I just find it easy just to make sure that I draw them uh, wide of 
the two drawings. Okay, so I've got that shape in. Um, what I want to do now is make sure that it ends up so that rather than it coming to a point, it's going to flatten off at the top there and at the side so that when I create the second part of the model, I've not got a seam down the middle. It goes across seamlessly. So to do that, I'm going to put a center line in. And from the point where the two connect, I'm going to do it across horizontally, like so. So it's horizontal two where the two lines connect there. And if I click on this end point, I can then shift the finishing of the line. So I'm going to make them horizontal to each other. And it flatten the end off there. The further I pull that out, the more it's going to flatten that end off. The closer I get, the less it's going to flatten that end off. I can do the same on this as well. At the bottom, horizontal line straight up and repeat the process. Click on there. And I'm going to move this around. Click on my center line and make a vertical relationship between them two. Tick that. Now, what I can do is manipulate the model a little bit if you want to try and make a nicer shape for what I'm interested in. But well, that'll do for this. It's only a uh, practice. Now, once I've got that out of shape, I'm just going to leave that sketch and I'm going to move on to the next plane. So that's just giving me a nice rounded finish to that front half of there. And the second plane, I'm going to make a bit more of a complex shape. So I'm going to sketch on that second plane and I'm just going to again define something a little bit more complex. Like so. Okay. Now I need to pierce each end. And it doesn't matter if it's not quite the shape I want at this moment in time. I can manipulate it and change the shape as I go. So I've got that there. I'm going to come normal to the plane so that I can see what's going on better. Try and work normal to the plane when you model it, when you're doing drawings, as you can see what's happening better. So I'm just going to manipulate that shape a little bit more. Okay. So you can see that it's starting to change shape. And again, I'm going to repeat that process, making sure that it's finishing parallel to the finish points. So make that one a vertical relationship and my other one a horizontal relationship between the two. Okay, I'm just going to judge that shape a little bit better there. Okay, so we've got there now another profile, another shape to go across, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to exit that. Now at this point, um, rather than drawing a completely another drawing on plane three, if I want to continue this profile through the rest of the model, what I can do is if I click plane three, sketch on plane three, click this profile that I've created on this curve here and convert the entities across and it'll put it onto this plane three here, keeping the same shape. However, it's not connected to the lines. So what I can do is delete that relationship and I can pierce it to each of the points of that line. And what that does is it changes the size of the drawing which changed the size of it, but it's not changed the shape. So it'll keep the shape roughly the same, fitting it into between them two profiles. Okay. And I'm just going to step out of that there. So what I've got now is three pieces, three sketches. I'll just go and get across sketch one and two, which is that quarter. Now, once I've got that, I can start to create my boundary surface. So that's my frame effectively for my boundary surface. So if I come up to the boundary surface tool and surfaces, click on that. Now the way this works is in direction one, I'm going to click the two parts that I want the sketch to go from and to. So I want it to go from sketch one up to 
sketch two. And you'll see there in the preview that it literally just goes straight between the two. So to create some shape between that, I'm going to click direction two. And direction two is creating a contour between them two um, points, the sketch one and sketch two. So if I click the curves that I've created along here, the profile shapes, and it will pull to that line and keep the shape of it there. And if I just tick them, and you'll now be able to see that it's pulled to them points that I've created, and it's created a lovely curvature following them points. Now, it does have to do some guesswork. It has to fill in the gaps between the frame lines that I put in on plane one, two, and three, um, but it puts in a really smooth curvature between them points. So as long as you can judge well the shape that you use in each of them areas, you can create quite a very complex shape and quite accurately as well. Okay. Okay, so that's just a bit of a um, introduction to surfaces. I'm just going to delete these planes so they're uh, not in the way. Um, I had them playing, sorry. Um, so that's a little bit of an introduction to surface modeling with boundary surfaces. Hope that helps. It gives you a little bit of support using that tool. Um, have a practice. Hope it goes well. Um, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Please like this video, comment on the content, leave me some information and subscribe to the channel if you're the first time. Um, and we'll see you. Next